Sure. Well, thanks for having me this evening. Um, my name is Danny Sauter. I'm running for District 3 Supervisor, and I'm coming to this race as a background, as a community organizer, not a career politician. Uh, I bring a neighborhood's first perspective to this race. Um, that starts with my uh, work as the president of my neighborhood association, North Beach Neighbors, and it continues with my professional work as the director of a nonprofit called Neighborhood Centers Together. I have the pleasure of working with seven of our community centers throughout San Francisco. These are centers that work with our most vulnerable populations and support them in their communities. And I'm excited to be in this race because I have a track record of listening to and delivering for neighborhoods. Um, for example, that starts uh, years ago, we asked our community here in North Beach and District 3 what was missing. And when they said a farmer's market, we rolled up our sleeves. I led this effort to bring a farmer's market to the neighborhood, only the second independent farmer's market in San Francisco. And we run that market to this day. Um, in 2018, when we saw small businesses uh, increasing increasingly struggling. We saw empty storefronts piling up. The city wouldn't respond, so we actually went out and we canvassed 400 storefronts ourselves, and we tried to get to the bottom of what was happening there and put out solutions to end that. And most recently in this pandemic, uh, we've seen our restaurants in particular really struggling. I started an effort called North Beach Delivers uh, here in our neighborhood that provides free uh, free volunteers to restaurants to actually deliver food for them. We feature a different restaurant each week. We've now raised over $50,000 in that effort and have expanded it, expanded it to four other neighborhoods. So that's my background. Uh, that's my track record. Um, I look forward to getting into some of the issues tonight. Okay, thanks. Um, do we have any questions? John Mark has a question for you. Sure, so, so I saw your answer to our questionnaire about which uh, supervisors currently on the board least reflects your values or whose who's votes least reflect your values. And it's the, it's surprisingly, it's the incumbent you're running against. Um, can you give specific examples of votes he's taken that you don't approve of? Sure, yeah, and, and, and um, you know, I think that's a, a natural response given, you know, that I'm running against the, the incumbent. Uh, and I'm really running because, um, you know, our residents haven't, been, haven't seen their neighborhoods improve. And frankly, the, the current supervisors had their chance. Um, they're asking for their fifth term in San Francisco uh, over a span of 20 years. Uh, and we're not seeing a convincing argument on why these next four years are going to be different than the last 20. To me and to my neighbors, uh, the reasons are really clear. The sky high rents, um, because we haven't been protecting our housing and we haven't certainly haven't been building new housing. In the last 10 years, District 3 has built less than 150 affordable housing units. Right now, in this moment, we have two low income units in the pipeline. Uh, we know that's not enough. That's not getting the job done. We also see it in transit. And Transit is linked to certainly the way our workforce gets around, but more deeply it's linked to the environment. It's linked to the harm we do to the environment. 40% of our emissions here in San Francisco come from private vehicles and District 3 in particular has not been making enough strides on transit. You know, my neighbors haven't been seeing the streets get safer. They haven't been seeing the bus lines get faster. We're not making room, especially in this pandemic, uh, for uh, solutions like pop-up protected bike lanes, like slow streets. District 3 still does not have a single slow street. Um, and these are some of the examples, uh, especially in recent years, that speak to just the lack of leadership and the disappointment. Uh, and I'm running because I don't think our neighborhoods can afford four more years of those same results. And to follow up, it sounds like you don't understand the difference be between the legislative and executive bodies here. Most of the problems we referred to are really the responsibility of the mayor and the supervisors have actually very little say under the Kaufman Charter and what they can do? Well, I think, um, again, to speak to, you know, the amount of time that, um, you know, someone, whether that's four years in one term, two, eight years in two terms, and, and now uh, asking for a fifth term, there's plenty of time to get the job done. And, and certainly I understand that there's discretion between legislative and executive, um, but at the end of the day, I think that a, a supervisor is there to deliver for their neighborhoods. Sometimes they can do that through uh, the legislative avenues. Sometimes it is just leadership. Sometimes it's working with the executive branch. So um, certainly there's uh, there's different avenues to get there. But at the end of the day, I think the the beauty uh, of the district model is that it is for supervisors who can provide for those neighborhoods, protect, advance, grow those neighborhoods. Um, and so that would be how I would ask you to judge me. Um, I've, I've got a quick question for you. I noticed that you uh, 
you are in agreement with the Green Party's position on full disclosure in real estate transactions, uh, vacancy tax, and uh, pied a terre tax. Um, that didn't seem to really jive with some of the other, your other views on, on development and, and production of housing units. Um, could, you, could you try and uh, justify those two positions where you are on one hand, like us, we're trying to take greed out of the development business, sure. and on the other hand, feeling like the free market's going to take care of us? Sure. Well, I think we need to add more housing and protect our existing housing. Um, you know, this is, this is personal to me. I'm a renter uh here in north beach with my wife and you know to, to some of the questions you asked i think there's um you know a, a lot of merit in making sure that our existing housing is put to work uh and for example that that means making sure that vacant units come online um i have proposed and i'm supportive of a, a rental registry i think that's a a very good start to bring some uh sunlight to this industry where uh you don't know sometimes what's happening with your landlord or your landlord's history. You deserve that. We know that other cities where there's rental registries, um, it actually has produced less safety violations, less evictions. So I'd like to start a rental registry in San Francisco. Um, and I also think it, it needs to go further. We need to get vacant units back online. The rental registry is the start. Um, but after that, you know, there's, there's a really interesting idea that I've been learning about coming out of Lisbon where they're actually, um, the city is actually uh, taking, uh, taking on the burden, if you will, of renting out some of the vacant units. In particular, they've started this in the midst of this pandemic uh, for the Airbnb rentals that you know, are just not in use. And they're using that as a way, a creative way to get units back online. So I think we need to do that here in San Francisco too. Um, and, and yes, I'm supportive of more housing uh, in addition to all of that. Um, but we know that uh, you know, no matter how much housing we produce, it doesn't really matter if we're not protecting our existing housing. Okay, thanks. Anyone else have other questions? Oh, that, that was my question. That, good, good question. I, I suppose I could ask, uh, you know, you're, you're, uh, we are going to be facing, we are facing just a huge uh, budget crisis. Yeah. And uh, what are some of your ideas, at, at, you know, as going forward? And I, I know none of us really have an answer, uh, but <laughs> I'd, I'd really enjoy hearing your take. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I mean, it is the question of the next few years. Um, you yep. know, first, first right now, um, there's four or five um, measures that have been proposed to be on the November ballot uh, related to raising funds. And I'm watching each of those closely. Um, and, and I've said this in, in other endorsements. Um, I haven't taken a position on any of those yet simply because I'm waiting for the, um, the controller's report on each of them to come out, the economic impact report. I think especially when the, the question is about the, you know, the economic impact, that is a report we all deserve um, to read first before making a position. Um, so I'm doing that on all four or five that are coming out. Um, you know, after that, uh, I would say that I think that the way forward is through investment. Um, I think of, of past recessions, um, it, the 2001 downturn, uh, it saw uh, the largest low income housing tax credit uh, usage in, in history to that point from a federal level here in North Beach to produce about 300 units for our North Beach Place apartments. Um, that's the sort of investment that I think uh, is the way forward where we're actually producing jobs, producing infrastructures, as well, whether that's affordable housing, whether that's transit, uh, whether that's schools or public works, um, that's the sort of uh, priority that I would put forward on the board. Um, and, and finally, I think it comes down to personal responsibility as well. Um, the mayor has asked the departments to cut their budgets 10 to 15 percent, and we know that could impact staff, that can impact programs. Um, if I'm elected, I've already pledged to uh, at least have a pay decrease of 10 to 15 percent as well, um, is a small way just to show um, that the leadership that we elect should be held to the same standards as our city and departments. Good. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Well, thanks very much for joining us tonight. Um, we appreciate you coming out. And uh, this, this statement will be available for the public to view, and um, we'll let you know about the endorsements. Sure, Thanks. yeah, and I thank you all for, for having me tonight. Um, if you ever want to follow up or if there's more clarification, Danny at D, excuse me, Danny at Danny D3.com is my email.